Hello and welcome. My name is Pankaj Dubey and welcome to the video number 7. In this video, we are going to talk about black box testing techniques and we will discuss broadly boundary value analysis, equivalence class partitioning, decision table and use case testing. So these are the four things that will be covered as part of the black box testing technique video. So first understand what is the use of technique and how we are going to implement this. So test case designing technique is needed to get the maximum coverage by using an optimal or minimal number of test cases. Okay, so let's consider an example where uh, there is any age field that accepts the value from 1 to 100. So instead of writing test case for each value which is falling between the 1 to 100, you will be applying some techniques to write the minimum number of test cases and, by, uh, and ensuring that you get the maximum coverage while checking or testing that particular requirement. So there are four things that is that comes under the black box testing techniques. Even some people call it as uh, test case designing techniques. Okay, and those are ECP, which is uh, equivalence class partitioning, BVA boundary value analysis, decision table, and use case testing. So what is equivalence class partitioning? An equivalence class partitioning is a testing technique that divides the input test data into partitions of equivalence classes and from each class minimum one data must be tested at least once. So what will happen here all the valid domain okay so uh, as we were talking about uh, an age field so we will divide all domain into different different classes okay and we will have to pick at least one data from each class to ensure the maximum test coverage on given requirement okay let's see it by an example so scenario is assume that there is an input field for age and it accepts the value from 1 to 100 so if we follow the ecp concept then what will happen there will be a valid class of data and you can pick any value from 1 to 100 in other uh, class in uh, we have created an invalid class where we will pick the value which is lower than the lowest so you can pick any value from the lowest uh, valid value which is 1 so you can pick 0 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 or something and in the other invalid class wh what we are doing we are keeping the value which is higher than the highest uh, so these are some kind of negative testing that you are going to perform okay so uh, there will be three classes as per the test uh, valid data domain also you can create some other classes where you can pick or you can put some alphanumeric values so it doesn't matter whether you are trying to test the functionality by keeping the value as a1 or z1 or c1 okay and uh, same goes with the decimal values you can pick some decimal values as well so the result is going to be the same whether you are putting the value 1.1 or, or the 100.1 the result is going to be the same so this is how you can divide the input data into different different equivalence classes and you will have to pick at least one data from each class okay next is boundary value analysis so the more application error occurs at the boundaries of input domain as uh, you must be knowing that the boundary values are very crucial to be tested while testing any uh, any anything and uh, boundary value analysis testing technique is used to identify errors and boundaries instead of finding errors in center of input domain so let's consider the same example so instead of uh, focusing your testing strategy on the center of the data which is which will be somewhere around 50 or something if uh, the boundary value will be for given requirement will be 1 and 100 1 is the lowest value of valid domain and 100 is the highest value of the valid domain so this is one thing and what you have to do is you have to check to check at least the exact lower than the lowest of valid so the exact lower than the lowest will be 0 sorry and one higher than the highest which will be 100 one one zero one so there will be four test data that you will uh, for that test data you will have to write the test cases which will be one and hundred and zero and one zero one decision table decision table technique is used in complex scenarios complex business scenarios where the input data will be determined based on some conditions 
so if you have ever programmed on any if you have worked on any programming language then you must have implemented the conditional logics like if condition so based on some decisions some action will be taken okay if condition is true then there will be some other action if condition is false then there will be some other actions so the same technique is applied in testing by decision table technique so what is happening here let's understand this by an example so uh, in conditions you can see that the, uh, we have uh, three conditions one two and three misspelled uh, and based on that some action will be taken so the option is uh, the condition is for cash and coupon and based on uh, the availability of cash and coupon you will be able to place the order successfully so in condition one you can see that you if you have cash then there is no uh, need of checking whether you have coupon or not you will be able to place the order successfully in second condition you can see if you have no cash then you will be checked for if you have any coupon so in case if you have any coupon then also you will be able to place your order successfully in third scenario what is happening you have no cash and no coupon so it means you won't be able to place the order so this is how you can understand the decision table technique next we have to see what is the use case testing so you in use case testing basically it, what it means is what will be the actions that a user can do on any system so in testing scenario if you have any given requirement then what a user can do on that particular requirements all the possibilities will be covered as part of the use case testing okay so let's consider a login page what uh, what a user can do on a login page he can either log in successfully if he enters the valid credentials he will be granted access and he can do whatever he want to do in your application otherwise what he can do he can also uh, provide some invalid credentials in that case the error message needs to be checked for the login function other op other uh, what what can you think of what an actor can do on the login page he can he uh, he maybe that he has forgotten his password and he should be able to recover his password on that particular login screen other what option could be like a uh, user should be able to sign up in case he be, if he is not already a registered customer so this is how you will have to think while applying use case testing technique so that's all in this video and uh, next uh, in this next video and next video we'll see